Okay, let's take a look at a definition of derivative problem uh, of an intermediate nature, kind of in between. Uh, pretty easy and super difficult. We'll get right at it. So, you know, these kind of come of different varieties and you've got to be prepared to uh, have the skill to solve all three types. I've kind of broken it down into three types. Here's the second type. So, again, we've got to find the derivative by using the definition of derivative. This starts with being given a function, in this case, f of x equals 1 over x squared. And you are at a point now where you know you've got to use the blueprint for um, the definition of derivative. That is evaluating the limit as h goes to 0 of f at x plus h minus f at x all over h. This is, I have to tell you guys this. To solve these problems, you never, 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 ever, ever, never, ever take the function and put in values closer and closer to 0 0.1, 0 0.001, 0 0.0001, and evaluate and see what you get. That is not how you do problems like these. Um, you follow these steps. So don't be tempted, please, when you see that limit as h goes to 0 to start plugging in values for h that are close to 0 and thinking that is quality means for uh, reaching a correct end result. You are wrong. So what you got to do here is compose this function. You look at 1 over x squared. The first thing you got to do is wherever you see an x, you're plugging in x plus h. So I'm looking at the new expression, the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over not x squared, but 1 over x plus h quantity squared. And then it says on top here, you got to subtract f of x. Well, that's easy. I know exactly what f of x equals. So I subtract 1 over x squared. Now, you might notice a difference here. Uh, instead of taking that expression and dividing it entirely by h, I've chosen instead to multiply it by 1 over h. This is just so uh, a technique that you can use to keep uh, two levels of fractions, a numerator and a, and a denominator, things can become complex when you put that whole thing over h and have a complex fraction, stay away from that. So if you start your original function and you already have two levels, this is going to be a helpful reminder and technique to multiply that expression by 1 over h. You know, multiplying by 1 half is the same as dividing by 2. So multiplying by 1 over h is the same as dividing the whole thing by h. Contemplate that. Anyway, uh, a technique that you've got to keep in mind here. So the next move I'm going to make, I know you're tempted because when I first did these problems, this is what I did and I found out I wasted a step. I know you're tempted to expand that x plus h quantity squared. Do not do that. Instead, find a least common denominator between those two fractions and combine them. So the least common denominator is going to be x plus h quantity squared times x squared. Leave it just like that. Here's what your work should look like. The limit as h goes to 0 of x plus h quantity squared times x squared. All right. So let's figure out how to combine these two fractions into one fraction. I look at my first fraction, which is 1 over quantity x plus h squared. And I see that my least common denominator, what I'm missing is an x squared shouldn't surprise you that I get an x squared then on top. And then I'm going to subtract. I've already got an x squared down at the bottom. What I'm missing is a quantity x plus h squared. Should not surprise you that I'm subtracting the quantity x plus h squared. Close it. Multiply it by 1 over h. Okay. So it's at this point you want to take the numerator and expand what you have. Well, that's not rocket science. You guys are able to do this. Remember that you've got to uh, subtract the entire quantity that you are expanding. Super serious, important. Uh, this is where many calc students fall off the boat. They don't realize how crucially important it is to subtract that entire quantity, and then they're off by a sign, or they don't get things to cancel as they should. Okay? So as you view that, and I'm going to look here at the next step, if you take away the parentheses upstairs, in other words, I'm, all I've done in this step is uh, taken away the parentheses that are in the numerator. 
So now I'm subtracting x squared, subtracting 2xh, and subtracting the h squared. This is going to make more obvious to me the uh, two terms that will cancel on top. I got a, an x squared and a minus x squared, so those are history. And I see my two remaining terms, each include an h. And remember, my overall objective here is to get rid of that h problem child that's on the bottom, the 1 over h that exists outside the square parentheses. So on top, within the parentheses, I'm going to factor out an h. The bottom is nothing more than a copy and paste. I still have a 1 over h there. But now that I have factored out an h, I can get those h's to cancel top and bottom. And I've gotten rid of that problem child, that big objective that you always got to take care of when you do problems like these. All right. So now that I've eliminated the problem child, it should be easy for me to evaluate the limit, even though my limiting expression still has an H on top. And truth be known, it still has an H on the bottom. Don't let that bother you. If you directly sub a zero in for H here, go ahead and think about what that will look like in your mind's eye you're not gonna have a problem. You're not gonna get a zero in the denominator if you plug in that zero directly in for H, okay? This comes with experience knowing, you know, some people look at this one and go, oh gosh, I must have done something wrong. I still have an H on the bottom. You got rid of the problem child H. I know you still have one on the bottom, but it's not going to disallow you from evaluating that limit. Have you done it? Have you directly subbed that zero in for H? When you do so and evaluate the limit, you should get this answer, negative 2x over x to the fourth, and a multiple choice selection, say on an AP exam, um, when you have those commonalities top bottom, would more likely look like negative 2 over x cubed. This is the correct derivative of the function 1 over x squared using the definition of derivative. And that's of kind of an intermediate form, one that you got to get used to. So practice on some uh, functions that are in fraction form and kind of remember these techniques for achieving a correct answer. All right, give it a whirl. Good luck.